The eight-time national champion Kentucky Wildcats open up the regular season in 10 days against Duke. Tonight, inside Rupp Arena, the first of the Cats' two exhibition tune-ups. These Wildcats, they're not the only eight-time national champion. So is their opponent. The Kentucky Wesleyan Panthers boast eight Division II national championships of their own. Commonwealth clash tonight in Lexington. And we're glad you're with us on a Friday night. With Jimmy Dykes, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. And the last time these Kentucky Wildcats faced an opponent other than themselves, it was seven months ago. Fast forward to today, this roster and starting lineup, total facelift since last year. Yeah, when Dante Allen pulled up and missed a three in front of the Mississippi State bench uh, in the SEC tournament, the, ch the changes began, and uh, John Calipari has retooled his roster. I think he's kind of revamped his offense a little bit. He's thought about his entire program. He made changes with his staff as well. And this is a Kentucky program that expects uh, SEC championships and national championship runs. And you look at what they lost last year, but what they brought in, especially down there at the bottom, Kevin, those transfers, Frederick, Grady, Shibwe, Wheeler, a lot of experience, a lot of productivity. Nine upperclassmen on the roster, the most in John Calipari's ear at Kentucky. And that's, uh, that's good news, I think, for Kentucky in terms of getting back to the standard that they set themselves. And that's a lot of experience, a lot of basketball IQ, and yes, the standard going into this season, projected to win the SEC. You see them ring it in as the number 10 team in that preseason AP poll. Here's the starting five, and it's very different compared to last year's nine and six. Well, absolutely it is. Look, look at the experience, first of all. You got Wheeler a transfer, Grady a transfer, Sheetway, all high productive players at their previous schools. Ty Ty Washington won the top freshman in college basketball this year. Keon Brooks, one of the talented uh, returnees that Cal has to work with. That experience, the shooting that Washington and Kellen Grady bring completely changes this Kentucky team. Yeah, Brooks, the only member of last year's roster in that starting five. By the way, I, I see four preseason all-conference selections in that starting five. Kentucky is back to, yes, a level where folks, not just in Lexington, but around college basketball, expect them. UK, of course, in the white. Kentucky Wesleyan this Division II national power it has the reputation of in the purple. And here we go. First of two exhibition games for the Wildcats before that heavyweight battle against Duke on November 9th. Look alive. It's around the corner. Here's the aforementioned Oscar Sheboy. Faces the double quick and back out to Wheeler. Brooks nails a three. Really good defense by Kentucky Wesley and really good offense by Kentucky. They got a couple of ball reversals. They handled the double team of the post really well. Of course, always a great experience for these teams that come in. They play the exhibition games. Kentucky Wesleyan, Division II squad from Owensboro. A little less than three hours out in western Kentucky, away from Rupp. Kevin, you're talking about a Division II powerhouse. Yeah. With the, you can't do that in this building tonight if you're Kentucky Wesleyan. Battle threw it away, and Brooks... Oh, the attack of the rim. Like Keon Brooks, the junior from Fort Wayne, and in a lot of ways, he may be poised for a breakout year. Expected to be one of the leaders, captains of this year's team. Ted, if you're Kentucky Wesleyan to hang in this ball game, you cannot turn it over and you have to make your first shot because you will not get a lot of second opportunities. That was Jordan Rowland. We talked to Drew Cooper, their head coach. He expects him to be quite a scorer for this team. Wheeler gives it away and Rowland coming back the other way. Pulls up, left it short. Man to man defense by Kentucky Wesleyan is going to be all night long making Kentucky work drive the catch move the ball space the floor knock down threes Brooks again from that corner hit the previous one this time left it short when we say experience we really mean it so much Division one, just college basketball experience on the roster this year for Kentucky. Up ahead to Ty Ty Washington. That one was nearly 94 feet. They connected transition. And the five star freshman has his first bucket. Kevin, if you're not going to get offensive rebounds tonight, talking about Kentucky Wesleyan, you have to sprint to the defensive end, maybe with all five guys. 
Bay, the team in purple, they, they run good stuff. Flex action, pin downs, flare screens. They move you well off the pass. That's why at battle, who just turns and fires, it hits. Battle former All-State High School quarterback and basketball player from the state of Kentucky. Yeah, he's the senior expected to be the top option this year. Thomas was looking for him, streaking in transition, and Washington slapped it down. Wheeler leaves it short. Oscar Shibway playing with a little bit of an injured hip. Tonight, I expect him to play in three or four minute stretches at a time. Bryce Hopkins and Damian Collins fixing to check in, and Shibway may be the first guy to go out. He's got another rebound. Yeah, number 34 in the white. Transferred midway through last year from West Virginia to Kentucky. Brooks now has two triples in the early minutes. Eight quick points for him. And how much will that do for Kentucky's offense this year if they get a legitimate three-point shooter at that four position? Completely opens up the floor, which is the goal of every offense. Nice, nice take shot. to the bucket, Antonio Thomas. Yeah, he got hammered and finished through the contact really well. Brooks again. Nearly his third. That time it's an over the back on Sheboy. And that foul takes us to our first timeout. Commonwealth clash. Well, you can't turn it over if you're Kentucky Wesleyan in this ball game. You got to be sure with your passes. Kentucky getting out, extending their defense early. Off to a good start, 10-5 Cats. SEC Network Basketball is brought to you by Beef. It's what's for dinner. Kentucky Wesleyan back in this building for the first time in almost two decades. There's the fourth year head coach, Drew Cooper. He coached in this arena four years ago and he was the head man of Division Three Thomas Moore. So he is no stranger to taking his team to Rupp to play an exhibition game. And he took pride that night, forcing Kentucky to call a timeout after back-to-back -back threes. Yeah. And yeah, he's a really, really good coach. I watched him today for about an hour and a half. You were there with me. And boy, they run good stuff. They know exactly what they want to do. And he's taken over a Kentucky Wesleyan program that has as much pride in their program at the D2 level as we have in college basketball across the country. It's a, fa a fantastic Division II job. Well, what did he say? The community is always out there to support the Owensboro Sports Center where they've played their games for decades. It's, it's packed for every, regardless of where that program is. What I knew about Owensboro prior to this weekend primarily was the home of Rex Chapman, who I coached yeah. here when I was at Kentucky. And his dad... Uh, Wayne won a couple of titles there back in 1987 and 1990, but really good basketball community. Whoa! Oh my goodness! Wow! Damian Collins! Did he hit the 42-inch vertical there? Bryce Hopkins, who also just checked in, <laughs> follows for two. Whoa! Nathan Boyle will get that shot off anytime he wants at the D2 level. Damian Collins came from about 10 or 12 feet away. Unreal! has incredible uh, hops, incredible leaping ability. There's Battle with the fadeaway. Uh, that's what returning score from last year. Battle is going to do that. He's going to battle you for 40 minutes. It's a hard-nosed, tough kid, competitive. The kind of kid that could coach the team if the coaching staff wasn't here. Number two of the purple, senior from Pikeville, Kentucky. Hopkins offline, Sheepway with one of what could be many offensive rebounds. He was a menace on the offensive glass two years ago at West Virginia, fouled by the Russian. Watch the recovery length and speed by Collins to come flying out <laughs> and get that right hand up on the shot side of the shooter. You know, some of those things that you don't coach, you recruit. I, th here's the deadly combination. It's not just the 42-inch vertical leap, but the 7-5 wingspan, wingspan helps as yeah, well. That and, and, and the quickness for a kid that long to have that quick of a first step, you don't get to a shot like that from that distance if you don't have a quick first step. And that three-quarter sprint, pretty good time, but to all kinds of potential in Damian Collins. Steel rail thin at just over 200 pounds.
after the Shibwe free throws. Kentucky doubling up. Kentucky Wesley. All right, so let's go back to pro day earlier this month. Collins, is in essence, out leaping. <laughs> the leap board. The, 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 yeah, right. <laughs> <he> did. <laughs> yeah, Shibwe came out. He got, so Cal got oh, five and a half minutes out of him. Like you said, he's nursing a little bit of a some hip tenderness, so Shibwe will be hit or miss today. Remember, two players that you're not going to see tonight that will be such key contributors to the rotation when the season gets underway. C.J. Frederick, Jacob Toppin, they're both out. I think that just speaks to the depth. Even without them, this team and rotation looks pretty deep. Lance Ware blocks that shot. Now Kentucky running. Davion Mintz into the game for the first time. Pull up three. And the rebound is Suhanov. Well, you see the green light, though, for Kentucky. Even in transition, Mintz very confident, very comfortable pulling up from distance. Washington up ahead to Ware. Kentucky has really emphasized throwing ahead in transition. Oh, beautiful feed Washington to Ware. And you know what, Lance Ware deserves to score on that possession because of his effort to run the floor to trigger the break to start with. And that was the five-star freshman, Ty Ty Washington, who his teammates and John Calipari both have been so complimentary of the way he plays the game. Just does it naturally, lets everything come to him, like that sequence a moment ago. Wilson, drive and kick. Yeah, the crowded corner. Out of bounds, yep. That's the first one of the year that I'll call, the, making a play out of the crowded corner. There's Lance Ware, just really good job of sprinting out of a roll action. Got his eyes on the ball quickly, and they need Lance Ware, Kentucky does, to be a good, solid backup to Shibwe. Mintz, driving kick, Washington really good. sticks it. Yeah, re really, really, really good go. offense, Kevin, to get the ball reversed one time, get a hard, strong gap attack, drive the ball through the elbow, make the defense respond, and then the spotted-up shooter waiting on it. Well, you got uh, Kentucky's nailed three triples. Like, like, just how much more is this offense going to be improved compared to a year ago? Well, first of all, Kentucky has taken ten threes in the ball game, only four twos. I'm not sure that's the balance that Cal wants going forward. But he does want his shooters to shoot with confidence. And he's got a load of them this year. There's Jamil Wilson, another Louisville uh, native. Mintz? No. That's a foul on Kentucky. Ball going back to the Panthers. There's the Hall of Famer. He's got such a uniquely constructed team this year. We referenced the first year transfers. By the way, there's six transfers on the roster. That's the most, not just to the John Calipari era, but in Kentucky basketball history. Yeah, the, 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 so most, the way we're going. The most experienced Kentucky team in the history of Kentucky basketball in terms of returning college minute right. Think about that. So now, what does that do? There's accountability within this program for every minute that you're on the floor. That was not the case last year because the depth wouldn't allow it. Loose ball foul on Kentucky Wesley, and so Wildcats basketball in a moment. All right, doubleheader on the SEC Network tomorrow. It starts with Mizzou, Vandy at three, and then, yes, these Wildcats back on the gridiron to take on Mississippi State at seven on the SEC Network or on the app as well. Big game for the Wildcats on the gridiron. Let me ask you this. The, the you best got? fan base right now in college athletics when you combine what their football team is doing and their basketball expectations. Kentucky, Michigan, and Alabama. That's where this Kentucky program is right now with their two sports. Yeah, it's a great perspective to look at it through. It's a good roll this fight. Strong two-hand rebound by Bryce Hopkins. Oh. And then to bring it, and there's the effort again by Lance Ware. That's exactly what Ware has to bring to this team. If he doesn't secure the rebound, he has to win the foot race nine times out of ten, getting rim to rim. Bryce Hopkins is going to want to see that assist on the during the, yeah. the film session later today. Kentucky by 12. Br Bryce Hopkins is a dude, man, I'm telling you. The guy guarding the ball right now, 6'3", 220, can defend 
couple of different positions. Look at Wheeler, just jars that one away from Rowland. Nice. And the Georgia transfer, he goes with the left. Yeah, I, I say nice because he did a nice job at getting the transition defender on his backside for the easy layup. Kentucky defense causing all kinds of problems. There's Bryce Hopkins, the push, the effort by Lance Ware, 55 in white, gets an easy one. Cats rolling early in Rupp. Well, there they are, the Wildcats projected once again to win the SEC. I, how about this? Look at all of those rankings. The top five teams projected to finish at the top of the SEC, also in the AP preseason top 25. But I ask you this, Jimmy Dice, of those teams, who is ranked too high in your estimation and who is underranked right now? What do, what do you think? Well, those, those top five, I think you could put in any order and make a strong case for it. I've got my eye on Florida and Mississippi State. I, I, I think they are two really good teams, really talented teams, like Kentucky did a fantastic job in the transfer portal. Mississippi State talked with Ben Howland this week. He was trying to get Tolu Smith back full speed, Rocket Watch, when they're at full strength, that is gonna be a loaded Mississippi State squad. I see Florida early in the year, the Florida State-Florida game. You know, you forget Colin Castleton, how good he was last year. Mike White brought in older, experienced guards as well. The SEC, to me, Looks like it could be an eight or nine bid league this year. It's pretty incredible to think about how Colin Castle, uh, Castleton part elevated his game. Yeah. Look at what he played a few minutes the prior year per game at Michigan and winds up being one of the best shot blockers in the SEC a year ago. Look out for Florida, Mississippi State. Yeah. Look, it's a deep league this year, the point being. I've seen Ole Miss. I watched them practice this year. They're better than last year. Good older guards, Jarkel Joiners, an 18 point guy probably this year. Dante Allen into the game for the first time. Missed fire from the corner. Lance Ware going to work early on the boards. Kentucky with two bigs now. Lance Ware, I'm calling Damian Collins a big because he can play the four, the five, either one. But I think you're going to see a heavy dose of Kentucky's offense this year, Kevin. More of a four out, one in, playing around that one post player. Spacing the floor with shooters. Kind of the tendency that all that, that all the ball is going towards. And that was the undoing in a sense of last year's team. Just limitations on the offensive end. And this year you've got some playmakers, to say the least. Avion Mintz lost it. That might have tipped off a Panther. No, Panther basketball. Cal goes with his circle action, floppy action for Mintz off the out-of-bounds play. Good strong drive, just the ball exploded. Nice when you can have a, a sixth-year senior coming off the bench in, in Davion Mintz. You know what's cool about Davion Mintz? You know, he was a starter his last year. I like the head, his, his headband, his look, his game, his shoes. But more importantly, the guy that started all of last year and Cal circled him up today at practice and said, here's my starting five tonight. Doesn't affect Davion Mintz one bit. He's the kind of guy, and Cal has said it, you could coach a Davion Mintz for 10 years and always want him on your team. On the other end, that was a nice find. Jamel Boyd, the junior, was able to convert at the rim. Make the defense respond, get an open and three. Boyd again. Yeah. Hey, talk about doing it again. Drew Cooper he forces a timeout. John Calipari's going to take one. Really good job by a Kentucky Wesleyan in transition. They, they, they came with a very aggressive, fast push off the bounce. They drove the ball right through the elbow to the logo without any resistance. Kentucky had to respond to that action. A spotted up three on the weak side. Here it is. I believe one of them is going to be, but just a really good rim run that time, and a little bit of a rim roll by Jamel Boyd. And then there's that last basket. Boyd spots up on the weak side. Anytime the ball gets reversed from one side of the floor to the other in transition, good things are going to happen. All right, so where, where is Kentucky Wesley? We mentioned before, Owensboro, Kentucky. Enrollment, like right around 800. What was their SID mentioning to us earlier? It's the second smallest. Third, third smallest school. Third smallest in all of D2. Two school. Yeah. But what, what a run they had in terms of, I believe they went to six straight NCAA Division II title games back in late 90s, to early 2000s. Right. And... Uh, you know, every, every 
smaller community in the state of Kentucky is crazy about basketball. They're crazy about Kentucky, and they're crazy about their own local team, whether it's high school or college. Makes the state very, very unique. It's a foul to drive into the paint. And it's Kavion Mitchell who gets whistled. Well, and, and particularly special for a number of the Kentucky natives on this Kentucky Wesleyan roster. There's a handful of them playing inside of Rupp Arena. Thousands of fans in attendance for this one. Special opportunity for the players, fan base, community as well. As Drew Cooper was echoing to us earlier. Wheeler uh, lops it. Crowded. Yeah, Sheboy almost got upended. But he's still able to track it down and count the bucket. It was a good job by Kentucky Wesleyan to, to rotate over and, and tag Sheboy as he was rolling to the rim. Lucky he didn't get undercut and over, or an over the back call, but boy, a lot of sprint out ball screens for Kentucky early offensively. And John Calipari said this after the blue-white scrimmage last week, and, and I think we just saw an illustration of it right there. Oscar Shibwe, the Congolese forward. Very nimble, very agile around the rim. If you're going to make a run to the Final Four this year, Kevin, in college ball, you're going to have to have a legitimate post player that can bang and handle the best ones out there. You think of Drew Timmy at Gonzaga, Kofi Coburn at Illinois, Paolo Bancaro at Duke, Travion Williams at Purdue, Hunter Dickinson of Michigan, those, those teams are going to be in the hunt for a national championship. If you don't have a post player that can hold up against those names I just talked about, it could be a long night for you. Kentucky has one, I think, in Sheboy. Are you saying, is this the year of the big man in college basketball? I, I, yeah, it's a year of a lot of things in college basketball, but the big man is yeah. very prevalent this year, especially at those top 10 teams that are going to be legitimate title contenders. Let's see if Wesleyan can slice back into the deficit. Boy, they got a close range look that time from Ben Sisson. See how they run, they run good stuff? Yeah. I'm talking about Kentucky Wesleyan. They, they move the ball, they move it with a purpose. They get good hard cuts off of their action. They've just struggled finishing three or four times right now because of the, of the length that they're not going to see after they leave Rupp Arena tonight. They're 4 of 13 from the field. Kentucky, meanwhile, 50% from the field. Shibway, head fake, got it. Cal talked today to me about Shibway's ability to make plays off the elbow. The elbow drives. Good example of it. This is Eddie Jones Jr., the freshman. Yeah, way off that time. He had that long, stretched out arm of Shibway right in his face. Kentucky up by two touchdowns. Will they be up by two touchdowns tomorrow night? At, at, at a safety. We got to ask the guys in the studio, Dari, Chiz, CD. I, I will ask them this. I don't know if they're listening or not. Dari might be. If Kentucky wins tomorrow night in football, they're going to go 11-1 in the regular season. Oh. I, I think that's their most dangerous game left on their schedule. You're on the record. There's Alec. Kentucky 32, Kentucky Wesley at 14. A couple of touchdowns between these two. Late in the first. You knew where to start every Saturday. SEC Network, all the coverage leading up to that afternoon's SEC football action begins with Marty and McGee at 9. Then you've got SEC Nation at 10. Where is the gang this week? You know where it is. They're in Jacksonville, Georgia, Florida. The world's largest party featuring cocktails. That's what they're there for. <laughs> Did I say, did I get that right? <laughs> no, that was outstanding. Outstanding. Kentucky three-point shooting all of a sudden. Three out of 11, 27%. Mm -hmm. They've taken 11 threes and only seven twos. I'd like to know what Cal is saying to, in those timeouts because you got to have the ability to drive the ball, throw the ball inside, score inside. If they're going to be what Kentucky needs to be this year. I like the freedom they're shooting the ball with, but that three for 11 number, that's not typical of Kentucky. Washington can shoot it. Grady can shoot it. Frederick can shoot it. Not concerned about Kentucky's shooting from distance this year. Yeah, number 31, Kellen Grady, the Davidson transfer, more than 2,000 points in his career. Now, you talked to him earlier. What, what, what do you make of his game this year? Well, he was the first to admit that the first couple of weeks running Kentucky's offense was brand new to him because of how quickly Cal wants to run the offense in terms of catching the ball and going. 
catch it and drive it, catch it and shoot it, catch it and pass it. And he comes out of a little bit slower system at Davidson, a, a terrific system. But it took him a little bit time in terms of how fast Kyle wants to play. But I, but I tell you what, Kellen Grady can shoot the ball coming off screens as well as anybody in college ball. There he is. He finds Brooks in the corner, dials it up, good. and that's good. Really good throwback by Grady. You have to run and chase Grady. As a result, he has some uh, attractiveness about him in terms of where the eyes go to when he has the ball. Brooks just spots up off of it. You know, last year he was slowed by that calf injury. Missed most of the preseason, the first nine games, but he is looks ready to go in his first exhibition tune-up. This is now a 12-0 Kentucky run. Battle can't put a stop to it, but a second chance for the Panthers. Now Roland, good shooter. Nice. Yeah, but probably their best shooter. Kid that had scored a lot of points at his previous school, Notre Dame College, averaged 18 points a game. Kentucky much better tonight on their defensive closeouts than they were in the blue-white game. And you, you, you had the call, and I went back and watched it. And they gave up a lot of driving opportunities that they have not given up tonight. Much better defensive discipline by Kentucky. Meanwhile, offensive foul on Shibwe was just swinging that left arm. Yeah, anytime you get that arm extended as an offensive post player right there, shielding the guy off, that's an automatic call. You win the battle as a post player from the waist down, not from the waist up. Mm. Sheboy sits down, Wheeler sits down. Mint Square back in. And a pull up too, that one's good for Boyd. Boyd's a good Division II player. Did, did a good job of taking up the slack defensively. Didn't settle for a three when he could take a pretty good two-point shot. Really well done. A good read by 21 in purple. Again, it would be no surprise if this Kentucky Wesleyan team finds themselves at the top of their conference again. You know, they went 10-6 and six last year during that pandemic-affected season. And Drew Cooper has this program rolling again. It wasn't long ago. They were a top five team in the country just four seasons ago. Falling on some losing years, but elevating back to where their fan base expects them. Good action here. Bounce pass to Ware. That is pocket pick. That's rolling. Really good double team of the post. As soon as Ware put the ball on the deck, just ate him up. Wyatt battle. Nice ball fake. Boyd has Brooks flying. And no second chance that time for the Panthers. Oh, Brooks just dribbled it. Looked like off his leg. And the, and the famous quote from any coach in the country, Cal just had it. What are you doing? <laughs> that has that said more than anything else over the next four months from the head coach. Infamous. What to are some, you yeah. doing? Sometimes... There's some descriptive words in there, too, but what are you doing? I just hope I don't hear that from you, like, during our next media time. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just making sure. <laughs> good, strong Battle rebound by line. Ware. Oh, well, Ware has looked good. 55 and white. He's run the floor well. Washington offensive. whistled for the offensive foul. Really good defensive play there by Antonio Thomas, because Ty Ty Washington's a pretty explosive guard, and Kentucky's doing a good job tonight, Kevin, driving the catch. No hesitation. Get the feet set, boom. That's a legal defensive play by five in purple. You officiate the defense, keep your eyes on the defense if you're the official who initiated the contact. It was Ty Ty Washington. Boy, Thomas trying to float it up off the rim. Hopkins in a hurry. Another offensive foul. Kentucky Wesley is sacrificing the bodies there. Nathan Boyle stepped in to take the charge. Really good job by Nathan Boyle to sprint ahead of the ball and then turn around the last second. That's a proper call. His feet are set, I believe, before Hopkins left the floor. Really fundamentally sound, well-coached team from Owensboro. It's 6'6", 220 pounds coming down on you. Wyatt Battle. Second head fake, back to Boyd. Uh, utilizing the head fake with purpose, and Boyd has one more coming. Good description by you, by the way. Ball fake, head fake, two or three times. Kentucky kept taking it. 
There's one, there's two, there there's is. another one, oh. there's three, boom, there's four. And the ball gets right in front of the rim, and Jamel Boyd making his presence felt in Rupp Arena tonight. It was almost artistic there for a second. Like we How many points that does one. Boyd have? Seems like he has more than six. Is this monitor correct? No. We're looking at a monitor that says it's 23 to 10. <laughs> All right, you can yell, <laughs> what are you, you doing in the, the right monitor code? then? Did you punch in the right code you to see this monitor update? I knew something. I knew I was yeah. going to get He now has 10 points. <laughs> Add one more. Four of six from the field. Here's Wheeler. Everything but go down. And Sheboy, just the tallest man in the middle. Yeah, there's, there's really nothing that Kentucky Wesleyan can do about that. Just Sheboy making a play over the top. Rolling left it short. Oh, wow. by Davion Mintz. He erased that one. He's in a rush. Wow, oh, to Collins. The defense to offense that time. Boyle with the offensive board. He wants a three. That's, Might be a foul on, on Allen. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Davion Mintz. Oh my goodness, the defense, <laughs> the block, and then look what he does. The back-to-back -back plays, the block by Mintz, and then the bring. Damien Collins there to finish it off. Cal asked earlier, what are we doing? Well, they can say right now, Coach. Jimmy, I know you were working tirelessly this week. You counted up every single one of those minutes. <laughs> no, I can't do that to Eric Lindsay. Okay, this is, this is what the All-Star SID has for us this week. So look at the total minutes of college basketball logged on this roster of this 12-man roster, or excuse me, I should say 15-man roster. 13,385, not just the most in the Coach Cal era. How about in Kentucky history? Yeah, at the bottom there. Well, we said at the top of the show that after last season, Cal said, I I've got to make some changes, and he understands experience. I think he understands how to handle that transfer portal. He did it really well, as did Arkansas in this league, Auburn in this league, Mississippi State in the SEC. But he went and said, these are my needs, and I'm going to go get them. The need for a point guard, check that with Salvier Wheeler and Ty Ty Washington. The need for shooters, check that with Grady and Fredericks. The need for experience, he did that in the transfer portal. All those guys that he brought in, they, they, they produced at a high level at their previous school in the Power Five. And that completely separates this year's Kentucky team from last year's Kentucky team. You know what's neat, though, about the practices, and Coach Cal has detailed it. A lot of the folks that cover this team have detailed it. The, the practices, because of that, because of all that experience, they're very competitive. There's a lot of accountability that comes with that experience as well. It's creating a nice formula for success this year. Kevin, it's the only way you get better within the season. And that, that's another reason why Kentucky struggled last year. Watching Kentucky defensively, they've had some breakdowns in this first half. They're better than they were the last time they were on this floor in their blue-white scrimmage. I do know this. If you can't guard your spot against Duke in 11 days, Cal can't put you in the game. He's going to have another film tonight to watch. That's Davion Mintz who buries his first triple. Shibwe has handled that double team pretty well so far. And expect that to continue. Jamil Wilson on uh, the pull-up. Yeah, Wheeler just got beat. Just one-on-one -on -one isolated on the weak side. His guy took one bounce baseline, rose and fired. The walk, or offensive, yeah. It was either a walk or an offensive hook, one or the other. Will Howard right on top of it. Yeah, that, well, he walked and he hooked because <laughs> yeah. the pivot foot slid as well. Now, Collins, one of the three freshmen in this 21 class. Five-star McDonald's All-American. He and Washington both, they really elevated their statuses during their last year in high school. Collins in Atlanta, Texas. And Washington out in Phoenix. 
New Savier Wheeler. Got him again. Another wow. offensive foul. They are just flat out running Kentucky right now in transition defense and beating Kentucky down the floor to get set. And that's, that's all effort. I told you the last break, the team in purple, I know they're behind. They are not being outfought. They, they are a very competitive team at that D2 level. And what would you say? I think it was in the first few minutes of the game, you said they've got to get back, and they certainly have. And have this thing back with it a 16, 16 point deficit. You know what good teams do, regardless of any level? They fix the problem within the game. And that's what Kentucky Wesleyan has done with a transition defense in this first half. 90 seconds till half, first of two exhibition games for Kentucky before that Duke game that you referenced. Vince just picked Battle's pocket. He's got options. He's got Brooks skying to the rim. Fifteen for Brooks in the first half. He has exploded from beyond the arc and from close range as well. Good bucket that time from Wilson. Do you know how hard, well, I know you don't. Do you know how hard it is to be going full speed with a ball in your hands like that and make that type of a precision pass and transition? Yeah. Very, very difficult to throw it to the right spot. Y you know I don't know because you know caught you a don't. glimpse of a couple of the wow. shots I put up at the, at the tail end of today's <laughs> shoot around. Yeah. Hey, back to a 16-point game here. Jordan Rowland just has a knack to get the ball in the basket. And Wilson slows. Now, Kentucky Wesleyan, a lot of transfers as well. Wilson from Arkansas, Pine Bluff. Expected to be part of that backcourt rotation. About a nine second differential between shot and game clock. Oh, saw it coming, didn't you? Brooks, he got blocked by the rim. Grady is there to clean it up. I don't Wesleyan. think Brooks ever had a clean handle on him. No, eight seconds to work with right now. Stays here, 3.9 till half. Kentucky did a good job in the previous possession defensively, not letting Kentucky Wesleyan just run a simple ball screen to close out the half. They rotated up, doubled up, chewed it up. Got two points because of it. Three seconds, battle has to hoist. Pretty competitive first half. Kentucky ahead by 18, as expected, 48-30. If you're Go Kentucky ahead. and Kentucky Wesleyan, what you want out of this ball game, can you make the other team work? Kentucky Wesleyan has made Kentucky work in this first 20 minutes. Keon Brooks leading the way, 15 points, five boards. And the Wildcats have the 18-point cushion. We'll be back for the second half. Let's go to Dari, though. And, and yes, Dari, Jimmy had a question for you. 11-1 season for Kentucky? If they win tomorrow night, Dari. Little Commonwealth clash. Kentucky and Kentucky Wesleyan are the first of the Wildcats two exhibition tune-ups to that regular season opener against Duke. Nice little battle with that first half. He's Jimmy yeah. Dykes, I'm Kevin Fitzgerald. So here you go, it's Kentucky, first time against an opponent, live action and since last season. Keon Brooks, he played a nice first half. Though. Yeah, he got a lot of productivity in the 10 minutes that he played, and every minute is valuable right now for Cal to look at. Keon Brooks was terrific, knocking down threes. I think he played as hard as, as any other Wildcat that Cal put on the floor. He got off to a good start, knocking down those corner threes, but he's also got five different defensive rebounds. So. Keon Brooks, six out of nine from the field. He's three out of five from the three-point line. Leads Kentucky with five, uh, five defensive boards. Here's the concern for Kentucky, though, in the first 20 minutes as you see Brooks finish it off with a slam. Cal played 10 guys in the first half. Eight of them had a turnover, at least one. Kentucky with more turnovers than Kentucky Wesleyan in the first 20 minutes. Yeah, and, and, and you see, yes, they shot 59% from the field, but at the bottom there, the nine turnovers. So it, it almost... Uh, <laughs> The other caveat of all 10 scoring, is it's not great when everyone else is turning it over as well. But hey, Kentucky Wesleyan, this Division II power that we've documented to this point, you know, a couple times they put the pressure on the Wildcats. And yeah, Drew Cooper said it this week. He was talking to the great Jerry Tipton. He talked to us and, and said, we'll, "We'll give you a fight now. We play fundamental yeah. basketball. We're not going to throw zone at you." And we're both going to help each other leading up to our seasons. And he's stayed true to his promise. I mean, his kids are locked in. They're, they're, they're fighting their tails off. They have out-battled Kentucky a couple of times in a loose ball situation. 
And they continue, Kentucky Wesleyan, to run good stuff and make Kentucky guard. Oh, their top scorer is number 21 in the purple. That's Jamil Boyd. And Roland with a attack of the rim. Couldn't get it to fall. Kevin, that's a layup, though, against a Division II team. A made layup by Kentucky Wesleyan. They, they just can't finish against the recovery length and recovery speed that Kentucky's thrown at them around the rim. Mm. So jump ball, so possession arrow favors the Wildcats. You know, I watched Ty Ty Washington. When he takes it out, the play's probably coming to him. Yep, there here it is. he is. Off the curl cut. He's still got a sweet looking jumper. He can score all three levels. He's a very humble kid. I mean, he was almost surprised that you see him shoot yeah. the passing gap. He, he could score like that too. <laughs> yeah, but he was. He was almost surprised when Cal first called him in the spring. He took a screenshot so he could show his buddies. I'm, I'm, he said, I'm serious. Coach Calipari from Kentucky is calling me now to recruit me. So very humble kid with a, with a terrific future in front of him. Yeah, Kyle Tucker, he writes for The Athletic. He wrote a great story about Washington, of course, decommitting from Creighton and then about a month later deciding Kentucky is the place. Hopkins wants three. Sheboy plus one. Too much Sheboy. So what, what makes him good, Sheboy, as an offensive rebounder? Because he's a good jumper. He's not a great jumper. He's not even in the top five for Kentucky in terms of vertical jump when they measure it. But I think he has great eyes. He follows the ball really well. He reads angles. And he absolutely wears people out from the waist down with his footwork, getting underneath the basketball as an offensive rebounder. That's why he is so good. He's got this excellent work ethic off the court, effervescent personality as well, always smiling. Grateful, thankful is what he is. Yeah, that, that's kind of how he lives his life. Kentucky just switching that flex action that KWU is trying to run. Thomas with three to shoot. Into the paint, good. off to Sisson. Yes, really good offense. You know, Kentucky Wesleyan has a little bit of Villanova flavor about them in terms of how they want to play. They drive the ball, they make plays off of two feet, and they have weak side cutters cutting off of those drives on the baseline. Off the Brooks Biss. Good look. rolling. Yep, no look to It yeah. Bounce past to Boyd. Yes, shoot Kentucky up that time with good ball movement. Good eyes, wasn't it, by Roland to kind of look off the defense and find where the ball needed to go. Hopkins way too strong that time. That's back-to-back -back misses, and here come the Panthers. Oh. Again, these Division II Kentucky Wesleyan Panthers. Look at the way they move the ball. Well, there's, I think it's the third time that the ball got reversed within that possession and then the interior passing. Instead of trying to go to the top of Kentucky's length on the inside, they use the bounce pass. They use it well. You know, and sometimes these games, these scores can get crooked. And it's worth acknowledging in that case just the fight as you've referenced from this team they're no stranger to this type of game they've played louisville in recent years xavier western kentucky in these exhibition games leading up to their season as well heck they beat evansville in 2009 in an, in an exhibition game as well so taking down a division one opponent circumstances a little different here good throw ahead what is grady by wheeler and the step through finishes with that right hand scoop. The guy scored over 2,000 points at Davidson with his legit program. He's, he's more than a jump shooter. He's a beautiful jump shooter off a screen, but the guy knows how to play the game of basketball on both ends. Knows how to win. Yes, knows he does. how to reach the NCAA tournament. Matter of fact, the last NCAA tournament game Grady played in against these Kentucky Wildcats. That was a few years ago. Offensive foul, Washington steps in. Yeah, good job by Washington to, you know, see the play. Just a fundamental defensive play. See the ball, see your man. React to the action. 
those numbers at the bottom there, it's uneven. Kentucky Wesleyan drew all those charges in the first half. 20 point lead though. That's what he does right there. He missed that shot, but he is so good coming to his left shoulder or his right shoulder into his shot off those pin downs. Battle off one foot. Shibwe wisely tips it to Wheeler on the move. As blocking foul, Wheeler, the transfer from Georgia, that's the playmaking ability that he brings to the table this year. He can get into the paint, he can drive and kick. Kentucky up 20. Big Blue Nation showing up in full force for the first of two exhibition games. Not just tonight, next Friday against Miles College, all part of this tune-up to the regular season opener. 10 days, in 10 days we get this thing rolling. The Champions Classic, Duke, and Kentucky from Madison Square Garden. It, it's, look, we're, we're going to say this a lot, but it's nice to see the fans back in here. They were electric a couple of weeks ago for Big, Big Blue Madness. We've got the students, the fans back in full force. Just a completely different feel, isn't it? And it, it just makes you appreciate when you're able to get 20,000 back in the building and the energy. Every fan base last year was not as impactful for obvious reasons, but for Kentucky's, they were certainly missed. But you know what? If you're ever going to have a, a year where you can't have fans, maybe last year was the year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 9 16. Well, probably good we didn't get to go anyway. <laughs> sure. <laughs> not the case this year. <laughs> that floppy action getting off the baseline for Washington makes him yeah. play. Yep. This time he sticks it. Kevin, di different guys can be the out of bounds under guy for Kentucky and come off of that pin down action on either side. They call it circle, floppy action, whatever you want to call it. It's a shooter getting pinned down, curling into a jump shot at the elbow. Grady poked that free, stays with Kentucky. I'm, I'm a big fan of Kellen Grady. I don't know why. why. You know, well, shooting ability, what else? His shooting ability, his size, he's all of 6'5", six, 6'5 five, six, five and a half. He defends his position well. He's a high IQ guy, and he can flat out shoot the basketball and make guarded shots, which you're going to have to do in the SEC this year. Defenses are too good. Now, Jamil Wilson nearly did there. Mintz was looking for Grady, poked to Shibwe, back out to Mintz still. Ball came off his hand wrong because it had a, a sideways spin, a rotation from Mintz. Uncommon. Mm. You watch the ball when it shot, Kevin? Well, it's not supposed to go that way, right? It's not it's supposed not, to go that way, the way it is did. <laughs> no. That's a goal pin. Oh, count that. Count that bucket. Shibwe, a little over-aggressive that time. Five minutes in, second half. They're going to play off the high post touch of Shibwe. Now there's more of a five out look for Kentucky, but there's the Washington again coming off of a just kind of a pin down screen away action on the ball side. Washington uh, it quickly picking up the reputation as someone who always makes the right decisions. Saw his, his folks, uh, of course, in town. Tyrone and Felicia, we saw they were over at practice earlier today. Well, he's got that poise that he yeah, he's attributes to his parents. That's just the way he was kind of brought up the poise and command and decision making right here. Grady can't hit the three. Take that every single time this year, though, if you're Kellen Grady. Washington made the defense contract. Grady spotted up from behind. Yeah, the only mistake that Ty Ty Washington's parents made was the name that they give him. I told him that today. You should have named him Win Win. Yeah. Because that's what he's all about. We're going to discover that at some point this year. There Washington is. drills it. Win Win. Well, oh, bang, bang on that three right there. Doesn't just doesn't change his facial expression. You don't know if he's having a good night or a bad night. Some of, the, some of the things that really, really good players do, he has. There's that fight. 
Both, both teams have fought. I'm, I know I bragged on Kentucky Wesleyan in the first half. I think Kentucky has fought just as hard. Boyle tried to call the timeout. Instead, it's ruled a jump ball. Well, and the last several minutes have been a little bit of a takeover by Ty Ty Washington. Can I, I hope I say this the right way to Big Blue Nation. There, there have been some years when I've come to Lexington, I've sensed a little bit of arrogance or coolness, a little bit of coolness about some of the players. I haven't seen that one time this year. I think you have a lot of guys that are mature, that's an older team. They have some dog in them. I have not seen any form of silliness or uh, immaturity that I have seen at times over the last eight or nine years in this program. And that's a compliment to this team this year. They're sissing for two. Uh, business-like. Very business-like. It business -like. almost feels business-like in the pursuit yeah. for success this year. You know what else makes you business-like? Knowing you got somebody breathing down your backside if you don't get it done as a player. That's called depth. That'll knock the silliness out of everybody. The foul is on Roland, you know, and, and John Gilberry has mentioned it. You know, if you play 25 minutes a game this year, that, that's that's going to be a lot, consi considering the depth. There, there, there's 200 minutes available in a basketball game, and every single minute, man, there's accountability with every minute that you play. Washington has the hot hand, bounce pass to Ware. Brady, spot up three. No, not that time. It's cooled off a little bit in the second half. And a foul on Lance Ware. Kentucky's three point shooting now down to six out of 20. Not, 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 not a winning number. Here's Boyd, head fake, and bucket. He's a good player, man, I'm telling you. I don't know if he's all conference at their, le at their level or what, but he's got a lot of game about him for a 6'6 kid. That's now 16 for Boyd, 6 out of 10 from the field. Five rebounds as well. Here's Ware. Good job by Brooks to space off of that. Just a little bit of a baseline drive by Ware. Brooks didn't come to the ball. He got away from the ball. Just an experienced play by an experienced player. Kentucky by 22. 62-40 over Kentucky Wesleyan. You see women's soccer tournament gets started Sunday. Doubleheader in the afternoon on the SEC Network. Vandy, Florida, Georgia, LSU, 10-team single elimination tournament returns to Orange Beach, Alabama. And every every match through the finals on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Who do you like in that? Were you, well, I was going to say, were you like Oscar Shibway? Did you play soccer as well growing up? No, no never played soccer. No. I'm, I'm telling you who's going to win that tournament. Arkansas. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good year. Great year. Did we get the answer at halftime? If Kentucky wins tomorrow night at Mississippi State, they're going to go 11 and 1. They're going to be in a big time bowl game. Yeah. I'll be all For, eyes on that game tomorrow night. If does Dari support your theory or not? We're still I, I waiting. I don't know. We're still I, waiting I, I, I couldn't hear him at halftime. I wish Dari would text me and let me know. <laughs> Maybe it's a sign that he doesn't agree with you. Kentucky's going to full court press some this year. They, they've done it handful of times in this game just straight man to man making you work getting the ball up you got the depth to do it you might as well extend your defense here's Wilson attacks the basket Brooks down at the board and Kentucky in a rush get it to the other side Hopkins the freshman instead drives back out Collins size advantage Washington, no hesitation, drains another. The ball does not surprise Ty Ty Washington. A, a lot of true freshmen, they're surprised by the ball at this level. Not him, his hands are ready, his mind is ready, his feet are always ready to make the right play. I think that's a great way to put it. 17 points. Thank you. Uh, he really, 
See, I, I, I do say some kind <laughs> things from time to time. Don't believe everything you hear about me, please. I, he really could be one of the best guards in college basketball this year. I, I, I think not even just the SEC. Whoa! Wilson nails it just before the buzzer. I, I think Ty Ty has a lot of dog in him in the, in the right way. Like, I think he's a competitive son of a gun. Is just going to grow into that alpha dog role for Kentucky as the season goes on. He realizes Brooks is wide open. And that's that's recognition by Washington to understand who's got that hot hand tonight from three. It's Keon Brooks. He turns the corner, gets his feet stopped like a Villanova drill. Finds a shooter spotted up from behind. Well, Washington and Brooks have now just canned back-to-back -back triples. So between them, a duo with seven from downtown. Seven of Kentucky's eight threes. And Kentucky's best three-point shooters, in my opinion, Kellen Grady and Fredericks, not playing tonight. Not a factor in the three-point line. Here's Jamel Boy, the junior from Anderson, Indiana, transfer from Montana State Northern. And he's having a fine night scoring the basketball, 18 points. Nia Brooks, both with a game-high 18. I don't know anything about Montana State Northern other than they probably have cold winters. That, that, that wasn't in the uh, Blue Ribbon yearbook? It was not. <laughs> But he has had a game, has he not? He led his league last year in field goal percentage at Montana State Northern. You can see why. He takes good shots, tough around the rim. He's got good good length about him in his arms. 21 in purples, and that guy's a ball player. Yeah, and these games, again, with with kind of a dual purpose, a purpose, it's twofold. Both of these teams get something out of this. Kentucky, of course, preparing for its annually difficult non-conference schedule that gets started with Duke in 10 days. There's Wheeler for three. You know, Wheeler's got to be able to make one, maybe two per game at most. That, that That's not what he's on the floor for, but if, if the defense completely backs off, he's got to have the ability to make open threes. Brad Calipari actually has worked a lot on his shot. If I'm going to listen to anybody in the gym on shooting, I might listen to Brad Calipari because that's the yeah. one thing that that kid has always been able to do. Now a graduate assistant on his dad's staff, and he's gotten Wheeler's shot where he doesn't bring his elbow back quite as far. He's got his elbow under the ball a little quicker. It's just a revamped backcourt for Kentucky. Add in Wheeler, add in Washington, Grady, of course, Mintz, a returning player from last year who provides great depth. As good as you are on the call as a play-by-play -play guy tonight. Hey, thanks for returning the favor. You, you might be the second best play-by-play -play guy in the building. And I know you're going to agree with me, right? Because of what's on the radio for the visitors from Western Kentucky. Yeah. I mean, for Kentucky Wesleyan, <laughs> Joel Utley. I think we might as well start talking about him now. He set the record tonight, Joel Utley did, starting his 61st year as a play-by-play -play guy on the radio, passing the great legend Max Falkenstein at Kansas. And what a, you talk about a treasure in college basketball. There he, there he is. is. Man, I enjoyed my 20-minute conversation with him last night. And uh, starting his 61st year as the play-by-play -play voice, voice for Kentucky Wesleyan. What a career, huh? You that could mean, be so that, lucky. That means he's called a lot of national championships. He's been, eight, in, and matter of fact, yeah. eight of them. Yeah. Not, not, not to mention the, the, the ones that they got there and didn't win. You know what I'm saying? The national title games. This is his 1,704th game as the play by play radio guy on WBOI 94.7 FM Owensboro. Yep. 82 years old. Grew up in Madisonville. He's sitting next to the SID Emeritus, who's also an encyclopedia of knowledge when it comes to Kentucky Wesley, and that's Roy Pickard. There's Collins. Count the basket, add one more. It's hard to defend long, fast strides like Collins has. You can defend long strides. You can defend fast strides. Very difficult to defend the combination. He's got it. I believe we're going to get to hear Joel Utley 
on the call, right? So that's what I was told in the production meeting that lasted three hours. St yeah, right. I, I missed that one. Stick around. <laughs> you may hear just a piece of Joel Utley's call. Up top to Bryce Hopkins. <laughs> A bevy of lobs and alley-oops tonight for the Wildcats. They're running again. Wheeler takes oh. it this time. He's at the line for two when we return. Jimmy, I thought you've been doing this for a long time. I have. Joel Utley is running circles around you. <laughs> we'll listen to the iconic play-by-play -play man in his 61st year as the voice of the Panthers next. This will be great. Joel Utley is the legendary radio voice of Kentucky Wesleyan Athletics. This is now his 61st season as the voice of the Panthers. That, that first photo, that was him interviewing Adolph Rupp himself. This is going to be broadcast number 1,704 tonight. For Joel Utley, he's part of the university's Hall of Fame. His first call was back in December of 1961. A Kentucky native who actually finished up his, his school and, and got his degree from Kentucky Wesleyan, has been on the mic for a very, very long time. And, and you said it, partner. We're going to listen in, uh, in just a moment to his call. We're going to let him illustrate and paint the picture of tonight's game. And it will be the best three minutes of the night. I think so. Broadcast-wise. 1961 is when he started at Kentucky Wesleyan. That, that's a, put in perspective, the same year that Dean Smith coached his first game at North Carolina. That's how long he's been doing this job. All right. Well, let's let's shut up here. Let's let's get to the let's get to the man been waiting himself. all night. Don't you say that. Yeah, right. Listen in. Wheeler makes both free throws for the University of Kentucky, and with 7:40 to go now, it's a 32-point lead for Kentucky. Talented, rich in talent, rich in depth and a hungry ball club after last year's lackluster performance for John Calipari's ball club. Kentucky Wesley in basketball right now. Panthers get it down low, and here's a foul from behind as the Kentucky Wesley and Panthers got the basketball along the lane line right side down low to Jamel Boyd, and he was fouled from behind, so it'll be Kentucky Wesleyan's ball from the end line on the common foul. Kentucky Wesleyan looking, trying to get it inbounds. A lob it in heavy traffic down low. Nothing's available. So nothing available to Wilson. He gets it out front. And then on the return pass, Jamel Wilson knocks it down. 79-49 after the three-pointer for Jamel Wilson. Kentucky Wesleyan is now four for 14 on the three-pointers in the game. 28%. And overall, Kentucky Wesleyan is 21 of 53, 39% from the field. Kentucky Wesleyan has been out rebounded, looks like 35 to 24. Up underneath, going for the shot, a foul against Kentucky as our Kentucky Wesleyan Panthers had freshman Edward Jones underneath, and the young man from New Orleans fouled as he goes to the free throw line with 644 left in our contest here at Rupp Arena in downtown Lexington. Jones charity toss is good. Eddie Jones for our Kentucky Wesley and Panthers. And in the process, he now has a total of two points in the game, and he'll have another opportunity coming here. Eddie Jones, 6'5", freshman. Very promising athlete. Free throw is up, and it's good for Jones. So that makes it 79-51, and uh, some of the fans beginning to file out. Now here at Lexington's Rupp Arena, we have 6.45 to go, and the University of Kentucky is leading by 28 points on our Kentucky Wesleyan Panthers. Mintz into full court for UK. Angles to the left side, gives the basketball up behind to Kellen Grady. Straight away this time, a one-hander that is off the mark from Dante Allen. Rebound claimed by UK, so they reset the offense. Back on the right side, Keon Brooks, wearing number 12 on that white home uniform, takes the basketball straight away. 
Looks high on the left side. A three-pointer by Allen. Got it from way downtown. Dante Allen, a three-point field goal. The sophomore from Falmouth, Kentucky, makes it 82-51. The lead is 31 for the University of Kentucky. They have not trailed in this game. They jumped out to a 7-0 start and have led all the way. And here's the phone ringing again. I just don't know what's going on. Okay, hopefully we have reestablished communication with the station. Boy, great stuff there, and I, I hope he gets connected back to WBIO. Some technical difficulties there, but that was really neat. Joel Utley again in his 61st season as the radio play-by-play -play voice of Kentucky Wesleyan. That's really cool. Yeah, just a, a gem of a human being. That's straight from uh, Rex Chapman texting me during that three-minute segment there. He actually also was a play-by-play -play guy for Rex Chapman when Rex was in high school. and. You could just see that, that, just listen to him describe the action and we're in downtown Lexington, like he's, he's, he's got a gift. Trust me, I was taking some notes over here. I, I, now, and, and we both talked to him earlier. He said he just still has a love and sure. a joy for what he does. My favorite was Charity Toss and Davion Mintz has one coming up. The only, the only time I could really relate to what he was saying is when he threw out there at the end. I'm not sure what's going on here right now. <laughs> I think there's some technical problems on the other end of this, <laughs> uh, other end of this table right now. <laughs> but you, you said it before. He grew up in Madisonville. He said he grew up listening to Cardinals games, you know, on the radio, listening to yeah. them with his father, and fell in love with the play-by-play -play platform. Kentucky now up 10 out of 26 from the three-point line, 38%. That's the percentage I think they're going to shoot all year. When I watch them in practice, I think I've watched them now four different occasions. They shoot the ball at that 38, 40% clip from their primary shooters, and that's what you judge. And Kentucky should have no problem opening up the lane this year offensively for their dribble drive, their five-out game, their isolation post-up game, the offense will look 100% different than it did a year ago. And that's the key. At times, that was not the case last yeah. year. Just sit in the lane and, and dare Kentucky to shoot. Can't do it now. Here's Boyd. He stretches out to the three-point three line this time. That, that guy's a player, man, I'm telling you. He makes threes, he's guarded his tail off on the inside against bigger guys. He's a fighter. Well, I think Drew Cooper eventually pure bucket that time. I think Drew Cooper has found where quite a bit of his scoring is coming from this year. Jamel Boyd, 23, 9 of 13 from the field. The game's leading scorer. So if you're Cal, I mean, I think at some point probably tomorrow you say, I, I know Jamel Boyd's a nice player. He's not Paulo Bancaro from Duke. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. And if this guy can hang 25 or 30 on us, we better lock up somebody in the next nine days of practice or we're going to be in serious trouble. Now Hopkins missed everything there. Goes back to Kentucky Wesleyan. Number nine, Duke. Mr. Bancaro in 10 days. November 9th, regular season opener. Kentucky's Cats still up big. First exhibition game of the year. SEC football doubleheader tomorrow on the SEC Network. Mizzou, Vandy gets it started at three, and then these Wildcats on the road in Starkville to take on Mississippi State. That's at seven. Tomorrow, SEC Network also on the app. Nice little quarterback battle. You've got Will Levis, Will Rogers, the SEC's leading passer. Can Matt Corral from Ole Miss win the Heisman? If Bryce Young wasn't the front runner right now, I think he would be right there. Those are your two. Yeah, I, I watch Matt Corral play. He's I good. Think, is there someone better than him? I don't know. 
That's a great matchup tomorrow as well, Ole Miss Auburn. All right, where where do we just go here? All right, so this is the before picture of Kentucky Wesleyan's locker room, a section that is of their athletic facility. There's Drew Cooper. Of course, did did he act? Was he part of the construction here? Was he the, the contractor? This is their new film room. And uh, yeah, up in the top right corner of the screen, the film doesn't, that sounds familiar. That's the title of a great book, by the way. The film doesn't lie. Who, who, wrote, who wrote that? <laughs> I, well, I, I did, but what a cool thing for Kentucky Wesleyan to play in Rupp tonight. But the check that they're getting for playing here in the exhibition game paid for that fantastic film room that they now have. Right. And coaches and teams live in that film room during the season, and there's not a truer statement in all of college ball for a coach than the film doesn't lie. And you sit down and watch it, like both these teams will do tomorrow. You'll see the good, you'll see the bad, you absorb it, you take good coaching, and you move on and you get better. Boy, that's really neat. Again, there's just there's value, as we mentioned before, in this matchup for both teams. And you see what can come of this for a team like Kentucky Wesleyan, and that's something that is going to be extremely valuable, beneficial for this basketball. Uh, he's just giving them business. Jo Joel Boyd is giving he's at 25 them now. The business. Game high 25 for the Indiana native. Washington fouled on the way in. You know, sure, it's a 24 point game right now, but Kentucky Wesleyan. Showing you why they're going to be at the top of their conference, the Great Midwest Athletic Conference. All right, tell me something you learned about Kentucky tonight that you didn't know when we tipped this thing off. I wasn't for sure how much fight they had in them. You know, you can't tell by watching Pro Day, Big Blue Madness, and whatever that was last week, inner squad scrimmage. I've seen some fight. I, I've seen some maturity about them. I, 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 I do trust their depth right now. I think Cal, you know, at some point in the season is going to have to whittle that 10 guys down to seven or eight, which is not going to be easy to do. But man, that's how you get better when there's pressure on you every single day in that practice facility. Good job by beating the press, wasn't it, by Kentucky Wesley? There's A.J. Young, but another transfer. He was at Idaho briefly. And again, it's just worth reminding everyone, still absent tonight, C.J. Frederick, he's working through a leg injury. Jacob Toppin was, of course, a reliable role player last year, dealing with the shoulder injury. Frederick, there wasn't a more reliable three-point shooter of the Big Ten the last two years oh. than him. I, I watched C.J. Frederick seem on the bench over there, but uh, I watched C.J. Frederick last time I was in town in a, in a five-minute period make 61 threes. I, I, that's about 12 a minute, if my, if my math is right. And I, I think, you, I think your observational skills are better than your mathematics. Yeah, skills. well, I, I know he just made a lot of threes <laughs> yeah. in a five minute period. And it doesn't matter if you're being guarded or not, this guy is hit. This guy is a one man wrecking crew in Rupp tonight. 21 in purple. He will watch this film over and over and over and show it to his kids and grandkids someday. Yeah, I was just going to say, now, we, we told you about the prowess of this program, eight national championships. I think this story that he tells the grandkids about going for 27 in Rupp Arena <laughs> is going to fall second to maybe that national championship story from yeah. <laughs> for the next couple of years should Kentucky Wesleyan get back to the top again. Can he get 30 in Rupp? Well, he's going to try. This is for 29. But he's got 90 seconds here. So if he's got C.J. Frederick-like abilities, maybe he can. You can get 29. Boy, yes. Two, okay, one away. I'm pulling for him to get 31. I know the game's over with and all that, but I'm just for a guy from D2 that can come into Rupp and get 30. Impressive performance. Kentucky, of course, up by 20. <laughs> What a loss for Montana State Northern, right? What'd that do to their program when he left? Get your SEC Saturday started with Marty and McGee at 9. Then SEC Nation gets rolling at 10, live from Jacksonville. Of course, we got number one Georgia and Florida clashing again. It all gets started on the SEC Network at 9. The only guy in the building that can guard Drew Cooper or that can guard Jamel Boyd is Drew Cooper.
Took him out of the game with 29 oh. points. What a night for what I'm just gonna give him a round of applause right there. What a night for that young man. So here he is. I think he's found a home at Kentucky Wesleyan. He started at Glen Oaks Community College, ju uh, junior college, of course. Then transferred to Montana State Northern. Do you want me to tell you the name, the nickname of Montana State University Northern? I do. It's the lights. Polite? The, the lights. The Northern lights. Oh, the lights. <laughs> There's that jump shot that I, I, I just trust the jump shot of Kellen Grady. I know he didn't shoot a great percentage tonight. That dude's going to have a game in this year for Kentucky where he makes five or six threes. I'm just telling. Kentucky's gone for a lot of ball fakes tonight defensively. They've lost their discipline a handful of times off of ball fakes. Nice night inside Rupp Arena, the first tune-up, if you will, for Kentucky. They've got one more exhibition next week against Miles College, then Duke, Champions Classic, 10 days from tonight. And Kentucky Wesleyan. Boy, it learned quite a bit about itself as well. In number one, they've got a score in Jamel Boyd, 29, that's a game high. They've got guys that fight. They, they, they ran their stuff, right? I'm talking to Cal before the ball game. They're like, these guys run good stuff, man. You're going to have to cover them. They just missed a handful of shots, but they could do nothing about it because of Kentucky's length. But his promise to Coach Cal about, we will make you work, we'll play straight man, we'll play a good brand of ball. Both teams actually got a win tonight in terms of it's an exhibition game. We saw our good. We saw our not so good. And then we go back to work in the film room, which doesn't lie. <laughs> Good job <laughs> sneaking that one back in. <laughs> Five scores in double figures for Kentucky. The leaders, Keon Brooks, Ty Ty Washington with 18 apiece. They actually combined to shoot 14 of 21 from the field. And between the two, seven triples. And Kentucky continues this march towards the regular season. The first leg in the books. Second exhibition game next Friday against Miles College. And you, you see Drew Cooper there. It's a part of that ovation that you heard from the Kentucky fans in attendance, I think is an appreciation for the Panthers' efforts as well. And the Wildcats hang up 95 on Kentucky Wesleyan. Stick around in just a, in just a moment. Jimmy Dykes is going to speak with John Calipari. I'll give you his immediate thoughts after this first exhibition game. All right, so here is Jimmy with Coach Cal. Coach, first of all, congratulations on the win. What did you learn about your guys tonight? Let's start there. We got a long way to go. Okay. Uh, Defensively, we got, you know, I've, I've worked real hard to get us to space the court and play with speed and create good shots. And I've done a poor job of defensively. And normally my teams would guard. Um, our interior defense can't be this bad. I mean, and, and they're good. I, I got to give them credit what they did. 21, what do you have, 50? 29. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it just felt like 50. And, but a couple jumpers, but everything else was muscle and go next to the basket and not sleeve our feet. I'm like, what a bad job I've done with these guys. But, you know, it's early. I was trying to play everybody. You could see that this is going to have to be narrowed in. Um, but it's uh, it's an interesting start. Now we got work to do. Coach, let's talk about your offense, your ability to, to, to space the floor out, open up the lane. You got shooters this year. That's got to give you a lot of confidence. The only problem is the first six shots we took were threes. Yeah, I'm like, were. dudes, what are you doing? I mean. And, and the biggest shot we've been working on is that floater. Get it, all the guys. Shoot that thing, man. We'll rebound your miss. The other thing I knew this team would do is they would take charges. Like, you cannot just drive in there because they're going to take charges. And I'll be honest with you, we got to have some guys. You can't block the shot anyway. Take a charge. You know, we, we got to go, do some of that. But I got to watch the tape, but I'll be disappointed defensively. There's a, there's a book out, the film doesn't lie. You'll watch that tape tomorrow. Let me ask you this about Ty Ty Washington. 
As a young guy, plays with a lot of composure, doesn't get sped up. Just talk about what you see in him right now. Well, how about we're not getting him shots or he's not getting yeah. opportunities? He doesn't change. And then he knew as a point guard how I can get myself off screens to get some shots off. Terrific three-point shooter, but a really good mid-level shot. There's not many that have those three levels. So I, uh, like I said, we, there were plays where we could have made an extra pass, but the guy's trying to make a play for himself instead of just passing the pass sometimes. Um, but I get it. They're each trying to establish who they are too. And the first game out in front of fans, pretty good. Cal, I said on the air that, that, that I've, I've been here over the last 10, 11 years. At times, I've seen maybe a guy or two a little bit of a little bit of coolness, a little bit of arrogance. I don't see any of that. I, I think you got a bunch of fighters tonight because that team fought. That team fought. You played against. Right. And here's the other thing, though. We got a couple that motors don't run all the time. Okay. You you can't be in the game and not ready, not rotating. Uh, the guy's really good. How about this thing? Play him before he catches it. Yeah. Well, that takes an effort and a motor. I mean, I can't just let him catch it because he's killing me. So I got to play him before he catches it. So, but it, it's a, it'll be a good film session. We'll go on twice tomorrow. We'll go on twice on Sunday. Give him a day off, a couple days off, as a matter of fact. And we get ready for one more exhibition. Um, but it's good to have fans back. How about I was going to ask you about what's it, what's it feel like this year for you? It, it isn't like a real game, but who would have an exhibition and have this many people here? Yeah. I mean, uh, somebody say, well, you didn't have 20,000. It's an exhibition game. <laughs> they, you know, a lot of people showed up. The play of Keon Brooks, and my last question for you. He played like an older guy tonight. You need his voice more. How's he doing in that area for you? He's doing better, more motor. Yeah. Keep it rolling. Don't be satisfied. Uh, defensively, you got to figure it out. Kid went and scored six straight points on him. Come on now. And so, and I left Oscar out. He's been uh, a little bit, the hips bothering yeah. him a little bit, so I let him out. But gave me a chance to see, all right, Damian, you play center. You play in there. See what happens. Get a shot blocker in there. The only mistake that Ty Ty Washington's parents made was the name. Should have been win-win. There you go. Thanks for your time. Thanks. <laughs> oh, that's what, and that's what tonight is. As John Calipari just acknowledged, it's a learning experience that you build up to the regular season in 10 days. You learn about your team. You learn what rotations work, who can play with whom, and where they can be slotted as well. And that leads Kentucky to a 95-72 victory. Win-win with 18 points. Team high for the Wildcats to go along with Keon Brooks. More breakdown of this one on the other side.